Have you reached Endgame and Path of Exile and realized your build just isn't working? Have you thought to yourself, I keep dying in all these white maps, how am I going to take this build to Endgame and fight all of the Endgame bosses? Well, your build might not be as hopeless as you think. It's possible you might need to make a few tweaks to your build to help it along. In this video, I'm going to talk about little changes you can make to your build to help fix those slightly broken builds and push them to the next level. Hello Exiles, this is Ryan from Behind Eyes Gaming and welcome to another Path of Exile video. If this is your first time here, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of future Path of Exile content. If you want to chat with the growing community of fellow Path of Exile players, feel free to check out my Discord in the description below. Now let's get on to the good stuff. The first and perhaps most common mistake I see with early endgame characters is not properly rolling flasks. Flasks can do a ton more for you than just regening your life and mana or making you a little faster or more durable. Properly rolled flasks can minimize deaths and make your whole play experience much more smooth. The first thing you want to do with your flasks is make sure that they're 20% quality. This will give you additional recovery in the cases of life or mana flasks and improve your duration in the case of utility flasks. Generally speaking, in order to waste fewer glass blower bobbles, you'll want to use them on white flasks before you begin rolling them. Curses can mean the death of your character in many situations. Being on vulnerability map means that any source of physical damage can potentially become lethal in a split second. You can avoid this by simply putting curse immunity onto one of your flasks. The of warding suffix, which provides the curse immunity, can be added through the beast crafting in the menagerie. I would recommend crafting a good prefix first and then doing the craft as to not leave things up to chance. The same is true for any beast crafting you'll do for flasks. Next is Freeze and Chill Immunity. If you don't have another source of this, you'll certainly want it on your flasks. Chill will slow you down, allowing you to be surrounded, and freezes can mean certain death. Opening an unidentified strongbox can freeze you in place and kill you very quickly, so make sure you press your freeze immunity flask as you open these. The suffix of thawing can be crafted by the same method mentioned previously. Of staunching is also incredibly important. A corrupting blood pack can wipe you out in a moment if you aren't ready for it. You can get immunity to corrupting blood on a jewel as a corruption, and this is a good idea. But you still might want to have bleed immunity flask crafted using the same beast crafting method as the previous to avoid some slow and painful bleed deaths. Lastly, I want to talk about instant life flasks. Sometimes, if you have no flask effect nodes, your health will drop too suddenly to recover using a regular life flask. Having a bubbling or seething life flask can help you weather insane amounts of burst damage. Even if the amount is lower, the fact that it's applied instantly is insanely useful and something that I would highly recommend for any life based build. Next up, I want to talk about the Pantheon. The Pantheon gives you a ton more defensive utility than you would initially think. Even I somewhat ignored it at first, and I would highly recommend checking out the Pantheon section of the PoE wiki to figure out which defensive measures would best suit your needs, and in which maps you can find the souls to capture with your Divine Vessels. In order to capture the souls for the Pantheon upgrades, you simply insert the Divine Vessel into the map device along with your map, defeat the boss in the map to capture its soul, and then you take the Divine Vessel to Sin and finalize the upgrade. There are tons of great powers, but the Poison Immunity one is very popular from the Lesser God soul of shikari other than that it's best to see which one would best suit your current build next i want to talk about utility gem link setups these can be very important both defensively and offensively these include things such as curse on hit setups along with uh, cast on damage taken setups which can vary depending on your build molten shell for armor steel skin and immortal call for stacking endurance charges and arcane cloak for mana stacking are all great defensive options for your cast on damage taken setup I usually stop leveling the cast on damage taken when it's about one fourth to one third of my health so that it'll trigger when I take a large hit. You can tweak this to what you're comfortable with, but I find these to be a pretty good ratio. Curse on hit can be applied various ways, Herald of Thunder for instance in a crit lightning build or a lightning build that can consistently shock is usually good enough, otherwise you may want to use Stormbrand or Orb of Storms to proc your curse. The reasoning for using these methods over self casting is that they'll stick around for quite a bit and apply the curse passively while you DPS the enemy down, making it nice if you don't have any sort of duration for the curse. Lastly I want to talk about flesh and stone. 
The gem is often associated with physical melee builds to apply a large maim to nearby enemies in Blood Stance, but the Sand Stance portion of it is actually insane in terms of defensive utility for pretty much any build. If you have unreserved mana available on your build, adding in Persistent Blind that also reduces damage from a distance will improve your survivability very noticeably. Next, I want to touch on gearing. Many new players follow guides, and many of those guides are based on the final version of the builds, and don't have much in the way of transitional steps. Since you likely won't be able to afford some of the high-end multi-exalt gear from the beginning, you should focus on putting gear that's good enough to get you through to red maps while you farm. Usually, gear ranging from 1 to 10 chaos for each piece will be good enough depending on the build. I could do a whole video on this, but it's a little long to include into this video, so let me know in the comment section below if that's something you're interested in. What I can do, though, is recommend using cheap transitional uniques that'll push you quite some way and are abundant and easy to find or trade for, generally very cheap as well. For example, rather than using some 150 DPS sword that you found on the ground until you can afford your 5 plus exalt 430 DPS foil, you should probably be using something like a Skava or Prismatic Eclipse. You should also never be settling for using a 4 link by the time you get to maps. You can obtain a 5 link on pretty much any armor you want by using a Jeweler's Touch Prophecy. These are about 8 to 10 chaos at the time of my recording, and this is an amount of currency that can be gotten very quickly just by doing chaos recipe and blood aqueducts. Furthermore, if you're willing to self-craft, you can easily find very cheap 5 and 6 links as long as it isn't during the league start that you can simply use an essence or a fossil to craft, and these crafting methods should be able to make them good enough to be very viable options while you wait for your very high tier gear. Lastly, I just want to mention gem levels. It's tempting to level up your gems as you go, I do this all the time, but if your damage is really lacking, you may be better off just buying at least a level 20-20% quality version of your skill gem. For many gems this will be quite cheap and sometimes because of the league mechanics, even level 21-23% quality will be very affordable as well. This is more geared towards your main skill but can apply to support gems to a certain degree as well, although I don't think it's nearly as important in most cases. I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to share any tips that might have helped you push your character further when you're having trouble in early endgame in the comment section below. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can become a member by hitting the join button below, or check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash behindeyesgaming. This has been Ryan from Behind Eyes Gaming, and I will see you next time. Bye!